Mendlesham and Mendlesham Green, in village terms, are small. There are 1,113 parishioners on the electoral roll. Some may say that as a parish council, we have delusions of grandeur. Others, that we are too big for our boots. We, however, would say that we are, are ambitious for our parishioners because we have vision and we care about life in this parish, not only for current residents, but for future generations. It is understandable that villagers do not want to change. They love the village that they live in and they do not want to lose the rural nature of their surroundings, the historic identity or the size and shape of the local community. The parish council also wants to preserve these important qualities of what makes Mendelsham, Mendelsham. But we are also pragmatic, realising that many villagers die because they become unsustainable. We do not want Mendelsham to be one of these. Mendelsham is fortunate as we still have a primary school that is soon to include junior pupils. A health centre with developing health services, a shop, a pub and many thriving businesses that offer employment to approximately 100 local people. However, we do need to ensure that these assets continue to exist and thrive. Mendelsham needs to grow, but with the support, cooperation and meaningful involvement of the majority of the community, including businesses, residents, organisations and service providers. This is where the idea of developing a neighbourhood plan seemed to us to be the way forward. However, for the project to be successful, we must take parishioners with us every step of the way, as the electorate have to vote in support of the legal document via a referendum at the end of the process. However, if, as a parish council, we had realised the amount of work that this would entail, we may not have been quite so keen to begin such an enormous task. Fortunately, as we were the first parish council in Mid Suffolk to begin this process, Mid Suffolk District Council officers and our own district councillor were all very helpful, and we have had and continue to have that active support, advice and guidance. Thanks especially must go to Jonathan Free, Peter Freer and Andrew Stringer. Initially, we consulted with parishioners through meeting with village organisations, having a stall at the Mendelssohn Street Fair last year, and involving school children and their parents in a school project. This project gained us a great deal of much needed publicity, as well as more importantly, involving our children in the planning process, asking them how they wanted Mendelssohn to look in the future, even though their suggestions of a Tesco store, a railway station and a cin cinema seem a little beyond our capabilities. The next stage was to give parishioners the chance of thinking in more detail of the issues that the parish council had already identified. These included the importance of local businesses to the parish, especially for employment opportunities, also finding out the numbers of, of businesses within the parish and the kinds of services and products that they provide. We were surprised to learn that there are over 70 individual businesses, from large to individuals working from home. Also, what kind of housing development is required that meets the needs of all parishioners? Then issues relating to transport and including parishioners' concerns. The importance of protecting and enhancing the local environment. And what sport and leisure activities are important to all age groups. To obtain this much needed information, questionnaires were compiled for each individual household, each local business and each young person between the ages of 8 to 17 within the parish. These were completed either by hand or online. From 620 households, I'm pleased to say that 404 were completed and returned, representing 65% of the total households. The vast majority of householders had a view about future housing needs in particular. 29 local businesses also completed questionnaires. This is a poor representation of the number of businesses we believe we have in the parish. And if you have not completed one of your business, please do so as your views are extremely important if we are to, put, if we are to get this right. There are questionnaires available on the table this evening. And um, we would like you to complete them either by hand or online. 
And if you complete them by hand, you can, you can hand deliver them to the Stackyard Nurseries, um, I hope Paul knows this, the King's Head or the Post Office, and if possible, by the 1st of May. And we've opened up the Survey Monkey so that you can complete them online. The answers already received do show that a diversity of businesses we have in our parish. Comments included the need for good support from local government authorities, such as Mid Suffolk District Council and Suffolk County Council, and that local people need to buy local produce and products to support local businesses. There was an overwhelming view that there is a need for better internet connection to support the growth um, of, of businesses. This will come as no surprise to you, and I'm sure that you will be interested in what Annette Thorpe and Peter Ingram have to say on this matter. The information received on the questionnaires is still being processed and analysed. The next stage is for this information to be di disseminated to parishioners and businesses and for further consultation to take place as the detail of the neighbourhood plan begins to take shape. It is hoped that this evening will produce further views from our business community in respect to the neighbourhood plan so that your businesses can grow and we can also together help provide local employment as this is essential to the sustainability of our village. Thank you. I would like to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Dan Porter. He is the MP for Central Suffolk and North Ipswich and therefore our local MP. He is here this evening to, to set out the government's thinking in respect of neighbourhood plans, putting this into a, a national, but more importantly to us, a local context. It would also be very helpful if you could present his views as to how he thinks that local businesses can benefit from uh, a neighbourhood plan. Also, I understand that he gave £12 million from the government for Suffolk to have super-fast broadband, which supports our local thoughts about the importance of broadband for a community. This meeting will provide us with the opportunity to feedback what has and still needs to be achieved. Dr. Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was, I was, I was, I was introduced to saying I got back to Liverpool very quickly today because I was on Women Day and they're doing a, an article on Radio 4 this morning. I haven't been to Liverpool, I've been uh, in Suffolk out about opening a new GP surgery, <coughs> which has been fantastic. And the best bit about my job as being your MP is being able to come out and talk to you guys and, and come back to the best of my week is always getting off the train at Stone Market or Ipswich on a, on a uh, Thursday night and coming home. So, um, but it's a pleasure to be with you and thank you very much for inviting me to talk to you. Um, and uh, what I thought I would do is talk a little bit about um, some of the things that I've been trying to do. And I know you've got Peter Ingram here um, to talk about broadband um, and Peter is the expert on that. Um, talk a little bit about some things I've been doing trying to do to support rural communities in Suffolk and then a little bit more about um, what uh, the potential the potential there is there to have um, a neighbourhood plan and what that could mean for Mendelssohn. Um, the great, the, one of the best things about uh, our part of Suffolk, be it Mid Suffolk or Suffolk Coastal or even South or parts of Baber, is that we have many distinguished, very, very distinct communities. Um, and communities that have their own identity and their own sense of um, own sense of self have their own priorities, and that's a great uh, something we should be very proud of. Um, it's also something that means that uh, my one of my priorities is making sure that I pick up on what are the big issues for that uh, affect and what can I do as an MP to try and get the right support from government uh, as an advocate for the area to support that. And one of the first things I did was identifying and working with the other MPs and working as a group was the fact that what we need in this part of the world is improved uh, broadband infrastructure. Now you're going to hear more about that later on. But one of the first things I did was we get that £12 million from government, which the County Council match funded um, after uh, a little bit of a, a tussle, um, to make sure that um, we could see that communities like Mendelsham have, can have the same advantages of broadband that are enjoyed by many big cities. And it's unacceptable to me as your MP to see you know, rural Suffolk not have the same opportunities. And when we want to support local businesses, local schools, give young children the opportunity to learn, uh, not just about what happens in Suffolk, but also about the whole world. Um, the internet is an important part of that. It's important to support farming, it's important to support business, it's important to deliver good health care. Increasingly, that will be the case as well. So I'm really pleased that we've uh, now got the money for the broadband. We have a plan in place about how that money is going to be spent and how that is going to be rolled out for 2015. 
Peter, you're speaking later on, are you, about this, and Peter will outline and answer all your questions on that. But in terms of actually the biggest and most important uh, part of improving the infrastructure in Suffolk is about having broadband. It's not an option for communities anymore to have broadband. It's just as important as having a phone line uh, or having uh, a road uh, and rail link. Um, and that's why I was thought it was so important to do that and very pleased to play a part in delivering it. Um, but what is important is um, you know, the, you know, often in the past, uh, I, I think it's been the case that sometimes um, communities like Mendelstrom may have felt more done to than have a say about their own futures. And the whole point of localism that we've introduced as a government is to support communities having much more of a say in what matters to you. So, of course, there has to be um, a degree of planning um, at, a, uh, a at, a, at a district level uh, and at a county level on some issues. But it's important that local voices and local issues are recognised and that Mendelsham has the opportunity to put into, uh, put into voice and actually put into practice um, and put into place policies for the local area that really matter to you. Now, um, how do you do that and how does that work? Well, there are going to be voices from the local community, from residents. There are also going to be voices from local businesses. And you have in this area, you know, not just um, businesses, obvious businesses and farms. There are about, I think it's in my view, or my understanding, between 30 and 40 businesses in the local area here, um, which employ local people um, and are an important part of this community in providing local jobs for local people um, and, uh, and uh, the opportunity to for local residents to work um, uh, not, you know, not on plan for the community that is about health, education, jobs, building also uh, where appropriate affordable homes for local people so we can make sure that young people have the opportunity to stay living in the communities in which they were born and grow up. If we want to have vibrant rural communities going forward then we need to make sure we can, the next generation um, can afford to live locally and have homes to live in. Similarly, we need to look at how we are going to plan for an ageing population. And one of the great things about Suffolk is people live longer. There was, I think there was something in the Anglian last week, but we have a very good quality of life. We also have um, a very good life expectancy in Suffolk. But we also need to make sure that we plan for that and plan for that in the way that we develop uh, local community plans. Now, what works here in Mendelsham is going to be completely different to other parts of our county. It's going to be different to Stone Market. It's going to be different to Devon and it's going to be different to I. Um, and it's important that uh, you have the opportunity to um, put into, into action what you believe is the right way forward as a community. So, under, um, from April 2012, under the Localism Act, you now do have that opportunity. And you can do a number of things. You can bring forward, uh, as a group, as a community, a neighbourhood development plan. The Parish Council can do that if you, if you so wish to do, to do so. Um, or you can get together into a neighbourhood forum involving local businesses. You may wish to involve the school and other groups as well. Um, and if you like, then put together um, a local plan about what matters to you. What, where do you want to see development? Where do you want to see housing go? What sort of houses do you want to see? Do you want to see affordable homes for local people? Do you want to see more retirement properties being built? Do you want to see some employment land in Mendelsham? And that gives you a real opportunity to sculpt uh, a future uh, and to sculpt and, and to make sure that you address local needs and how you see them. And I think that's a, a real opportunity that you have. Um, the other thing that it also provides an opportunity to do is you can also, uh, if you want, um, as a community, um, under that act as well, bring forward um, what are called neighbourhood uh, development orders. So you can, if you, you know, planning can be quite controversial, but there is the opportunity, um, and I, I'll put down the detail of that in writing to, to you after the meeting. Yeah, but there's opportunities as well as, as part of the neighbourhood development plan and another part of the Localism Act is to bring forward development orders uh, about um, how uh, planning should take place, uh, and uh, uh, which means that uh, the normal planning processes that can sometimes be confusing and frustrating can be run at a much more local level in some cases, and that gives you much more of a say sometimes over those local planning decisions, which is, I think, very often the biggest frustration to local residents is often planning. Um, and there's an opportunity now through the Localism Act for you to be able to bring forward those development orders um, as well. Um, and um, there's also the opportunity to have much more say over uh, community infrastructure levies. When houses uh, are often built, 
Um, and we, we have what are called Section 106 agreements at the local level of planning. Very often, local communities don't see the benefits of those Section 106 orders. Um, new houses are built, and if new houses are built, it's right that the area that has those houses should also receive some of the infrastructure payments that go to that to support improvements at the local school, to support uh, maybe improvements to GP surgery, and also support other local improvements. And what the Locals Act has allowed um, you, as a part of your plan, if you'd like, to put in place um, local infrastructure levies and have a say over how some of that infrastructure money is spent at a local level. So there is more opportunity to do that. So there are a number of good things that have come forward um, from the localism uh, bill. It is also led at a local level. So if you decide as a community you want to develop your own neighbourhood plan, you can do that. You're entitled to do that. And I hope that you do do that. For the government, we set up a fund. We, you can bid for up to £7,000 to support um, the development of this plan if you want to do it. You then go out to consult with the local community about it. As long as 50% of people um, through a local referendum sign up to uh, the plan, then the local community has much more ownership over what happens. Um, I think it's a really good idea. I think it's something that uh, I'm really delighted that you're looking into and taking forward potentially here uh, in Mendelsham. Uh, and it's something I know that will really make, the, make uh, for a stronger community and a community that actually has much more say over what happens locally is able to much more uh, effectively link um, what goes on in education, health, with the local community, and also what happens with local employers. So I'm here to help you. That's what, I, that's what I'm here to do as your local MP. I want to help you do this. I stand ready to do so. Um, and I urge you to take advantage of this opportunity. There's government money available to support you in doing it. Uh, and me and my team uh, in my office and Adam is here tonight. We're also very pleased to do what we can. So thank you for giving me the chance to speak to you this evening. I'm happy to take uh, any questions uh, more generally, but uh, specifically on how this process may work and what more could be done and what opportunities may bring. Thank you. Partnership Director for BT in the East of England, and secondly, Peter Ingram, who is currently employed by Suffolk County Council as the Programme Director for the Suffolk Broadband Project. I understand, Peter, that you have responsibility for sending, spending the allocated £53 million for the improvement of broadband services. I think that I'm right in assuming that not all of this money is coming Mendelssohn's way. <laughs> Would you like to? I'll leave Peter to continue consuming his alcohol while I start. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for the welcome and the invitation. Um, as mentioned, I'm part of the Eastern BT group on two fronts. Uh, typically, my main role is very much I try to be the local face of BT, given the number of occasions when you don't actually get to see or talk to somebody in person. So, as far as that aspect is concerned, I'll happily take away or attempt to answer any specific BT related questions you may wish to ping up after we discuss broadband. Um, as far as my role is concerned, an important part to note is whilst I work for BT, I work for BT Group. And in that role, I'm working for the part of the organisation that doesn't mind who you buy your services from. So whether you buy service from TalkTalk, Talk, from Sky, from any of the other operators, my interest on behalf of BT Group is trying to make sure that the network we put in within our commercial programme and the network that's being put in under the Suffolk programme gets used by as many operators as possible, which is then to give you the end users as much choice as possible in the market, both in terms of service and price points that you have. So whilst I'm here with the BT hat on, I don't really mind who you're buying your services from. I'll start to talk a little bit about the journey to where we are at the moment. Um, obviously, from a commercial perspective, BT made a decision a few years ago that we were going to invest commercially in a programme that's going to take to about 65% of the UK. So it doesn't take a major mathematician to realise that there will be a gap between the commercial deployment that you were looking to do and the aspirations to get to as close to 100% as possible. So out of that, 
the BD UK project was born, and the government was sufficiently forward thinking to actually put some money up to that. And I have to actually commend Dr. Coulter for an observation that he made about lobbying government for that money. There were certainly rumours very early on in the days when the programme kicked off of the Suffolk MPs hunting in packs around Westminster. Um, and they don't. And, and, and that was borne out by the fact that Suffolk were very, very early, like first on the day. We won't comment that it was marginally earlier in another county, but that said, the fact that the Suffolk MPs put their weight behind the project so early on is testament to the importance that is seen locally and the fact that the importance that government saw for the project. So, on that basis, the uh, project was born. Effectively, what we had was BT had delivered commercially, and in Suffolk, and Peter would no doubt articulate in his normal manner, in Suffolk, distance pro pro uh, proves to be somewhat of a challenge in terms of our commercial requirement. Therefore, the project that is in progress at the moment is to look to address the gap between the commercial programme that BT Group did originally versus the gap to get to as close to 95% to hopefully to 100% ultimately, although that in itself is a major challenge. So the way this came about is obviously the funding was awarded. Each county in the UK, which county in England, had an amount of funding allocated. Some had more than others. Some had done a more scientific approach to how they attempted to gain funding than others. So the money that was awarded to Suffolk and duly matched by the County Council, coupled with some additional funding from BT Group, was asked to be spread as fair and as equitably across the county as could possibly get the greatest coverage. Now that's an important thing to note because other counties have asked for areas to be prioritised and as a direct result of that, they have not got the same level of coverage. So what actually happened from a, from a general perspective is that Suffolk County Council said, okay, um, we've looked at this, this is the money, we want you to give the residents and the businesses of this county as much coverage as possible under this funding regime conscious that there were going to be some hard decisions to make in terms of how and where the money was used. So as part of that, there was a massive amount of technical modelling happening, happened. And the way the deployment was very much determined is that for each exchange across Suffolk, there are a number of Green Street cabinets, which I'm sure many of you would have seen stuck in the ditch on the side of a road over the past few decades. And effectively what we did is we had to look at all of those to determine their viability within the programme, both from a financial perspective for the viability and from the perspective of uploading them to provide sufficient speed for the residents served off them. Now those of you that have broadband at the moment, and I'm very cautious around that, given that if you live in a rural community and you are a long way from the exchange in your cabinet, you will be having slow speeds now. So the whole rationale behind the project is to try and replace the long distances that are currently served from copper from the exchange to those green cabinets with optical fibre which then decreases the amount of line speed that gets lost over that distance. So effectively we take the copper from the exchange to the cabinet and replace that with optical fibre, so it just means that it pushes the signal off further. Now, the project has been running for quite some time now. We have a number of exchanges, obviously, that have gone live. There's a large swathe of homes that have already gone live. But I think from the perspective of this evening, uh, the whole idea was, let's have a look to see where and what membership is going to benefit from the <coughs> programme. Um, very lucky that Peter is here this evening and, and I would sort of concur with the comment that Dr Poulter made about Peter's commitment to Suffolk. But what's not widely known is actually Peter is leading on a lot of these projects in helping government nationally to define some of the plans and the programmes, not least of which because of the fact that it is public money, making sure that Suffolk, along with the other counties, gets the best bang for the buck out of the investment from us 
and making sure that we are accountable to you in the project, both within the finances that are there and within the coverage that we've committed to deploy. Um, we went through the BDK procurement process, as Annette mentioned, together with our friends in Norfolk, who we were the first to sign a contract with BT. We've been working on that programme now for more than a year, I believe 15 months, and we're making fantastic progress. And that's going to take the 50% coverage to just over 80% of the premises in the Suffolk by the autumn of next year. So by September of 2015, we'll have added 100,000 premises to the just under 200,000 that BT have made commercially within Suffolk to take 50% coverage to 80% of the public. We're also the first county in the UK to begin the second stage of the process. So we've secured some further funding from government. We've also secured a commitment from Suffolk County Council to further match that funding. And we're also working with the New Anglia Local Enterprise Partnership to try and secure additional local funding from there. And the aim of the second round of procurement, which we're just, just starting now, to try and take the 80% coverage that we'll get to by autumn of next year towards 95% coverage by early 2017. It will be the, like, one of the first places in the UK to do that. In fact, Suffolk is leading that programme. We have two other parts of the UK that are acting as fast forwards immediately on our heels, which is Northamptonshire and Hampshire. So there's the three of us that go through the process, and then other counties across the UK before we want. And then there ultimately there'll have to be a a final phase of the programme to get to the most difficult 5%, I'd get from 95% towards 100%. Um, that will be challenging, particularly in a rural area like Suffolk, because of course the last 5% are typically quite widely dispersed, isolated properties. So the way to think about what we're going to do with the 95% is, if you can put a name on a place, then we'll pretty much cover you within the 95%. But where there are individual properties that are widely dispersed, that will be more challenging. It will ultimately depend on the next government, after the next general election, making further funding available to tackle that last 5%. But what the current government has already done is committed a £10 million fund to be spent this year on trying alternative technology solutions for that last final 5%. And again, Suffolk is going to be in the main of trialling that. We obviously benefit by having an industrial park in Suffolk, um, and we have uh, an understanding with BT about trialling some of those solutions for the last 5%. But we'll also be working um, because the, the last 5% is going to require a diverse mix of alternative technologies to get to everybody. And we'll be starting to try those this year ahead of getting um, that done from uh, 2017 onwards. Just over um, from Mendelsohn and Cabinet 5 on all of the skills. And that will, that will cover a large part of that green area. There's also other cabinets over here that have been built. This wide area, as Andrew will recognise, is um, the edge of Old New England. Green, which is done commercially. Um, so the green area is being done as we speak. Um, the blue areas are being done in phase six, which is towards the, the, the back end of this year, so before Christmas. Um, and currently, the grey areas, which are over here and over there, are not in the first phase of point of time. So the money didn't go far enough to include those areas in the first phase but they are included in the target area for the second procurement that I mentioned that we're just getting started. And perhaps I could leave you in particular with one of my major frustrations with broadband locally, and that is why I'm extremely grateful that BT gives me BT Sport 3 for my iPad. I'd also like to have that consistent broadband signal so that it doesn't just freeze before the goal is scored. <laughs> and your ability to schedule that is, continues to amaze me. <laughs> but thank you very much. Thank you everybody for coming along this evening. I hope you've all found it very interesting and informative. And um, who knows, maybe we'll meet in a year's time and we'll look back on what's really happened and how good it's been. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.